Yeah, first, thanks for the conference organizers for the invitation. Really excited to be here and present some work of ours uh, that we have done recently. But uh, before I start, I want to give a shout out to our colleagues from Roche who uh, presented last week their first uh, R only clinical trial. And I think Vincent touched on some of the software that was coming out of this uh, initiative. And I think that's a really cool uh, leap for the for the open source clinical community and shows uh, what's possible. Um, I'm going to present today on behalf of uh, Matthew Kumar, who is the mastermind behind this uh, project. And um, if you are interested in learning about very crazy stuff you can do with R and uh, Shiny, be sure to visit his blog or um, visit him on LinkedIn. And um, with that, I want, just want to give a short disclaimer. So the, the views and positions presented here are mine or um, the authors and not necessarily bias. And this is for educational purposes only. So let me start uh, introducing a little bit the medical writing process. So um, assume that we have a blinded pivotal phase three study in oncology, a study that is probably conducted over several years consumed some millions, it's a very crucial milestone for any pharma company. The results of the studies are primar primarily TLFs, so tables listing figures, that's the actual data. And it is also a CSR document, the clinical study report, which is shipped to authorities uh, in order to request market authorization of a drug uh, for a specific indication, for example. And usually, um, the process goes, uh, there is data unblinding, the results exists in thousands of tables, and the narratives need to be written for those tables that describe, describe the study outcome, uh, so the efficacy, the safety, demographics, and many, many more summary tables. So it's a quite challenging task. And I mentioned to you, it's thousands of tables, and it looks like this, so not very beautiful. So in the past, what a medical writer did, um, he or she received um, a Word document or an RTF document with thousands of um, tens to th hundreds to thousands of tables. And um, they need to write the narratives. So they need to get loads of data, but make the data be adjusted to a to templates, so it's usually only a subset of the data that is used. So that means copying and pasting tables from, from Word documents to another Word document or a report template. Um, so it needs to uh, have reformatting and so on. There's Those tables are static for the medic medical writer. And a lot of time is spent on very basic descriptions of content. So it's quite predictable text. and due to short timelines, usually less time to interpret the data or look into it in depth. And some tables um, are very lengthy and complex, and it makes it very difficult to distinguish between uh, meaningful and not so meaningful uh, messages, so identifying the relevant ones. So that is the past. Our idea is now, um, how can we help medical writers to get their work done faster or getting their first draft faster? So we take the um, study data, which is uh, ta usually tabular data, the TLFs, and um, additionally metadata that helps to programmatically access the data so that we can computationally um, know what is in the tables written and uh, how to how to handle this data. The medical writer uses an interface, which I will show you in a second. So obviously that's a Chinese application. And we leverage large language, language models um, to generate a first data-driven draft of selected CSR sections. Um, the technology we are using is all, almost all vanilla R. So I told you it's a shiny application. We extend this a little bit uh, with um, extension packages like BS4 Dash, Shiny JS, Shiny Busy, Shiny Widgets, and so on to make the user experience a little better. Um, we add also 
some custom JavaScript. Um, I will come to that in some minutes. Um, the tables you will see are uh, using flex table. Um, we do API and data connectivity with SSH and HTTR2. We make use of the full tidyverse stack and the document handling. So that means uh, putting the output we generate uh, into a um, Word template using Officer. And the application I'm going to show you is hosted on Posit Connect. Um, here is the logical flow. So we have a medical writer that needs to log in into the application. He provides uh, credentials, and those credentials are also passed down to the clinical study database. So that means a medical writer can only access the studies uh, he is allowed to see and he, he currently works on. Um, the study data is then passed back into the uh, Shiny application as a JSON format. The medical writer can then apply filters uh, and parameters uh, to the table to uh, filter the table, to sort the table, and uh, to display it um, um, with customized requirements. And then um, he does the prompting. We will see that in a second how that looks like. So if he um, triggers the API call or clicks the button to generate text, the minimized data after filtering, after applying, um, filters to the table is sent together with a prompt to an LLM endpoint. The generated plain text is received back. And in the last step, we put everything into um, a template um, that is then provided to the medical writer. Um, the, the LLM API called is wrapped in a dedicated R package that is uh, internally released um, just to um, make reuse of uh, convenience functions that are used in multiple uh, projects where we can make use of large language models. So I will guide you now through the process, what the user will see when uh, he or she uses the application. So first, the, the main mission theme of our tool, which we call an aromatic AI, is accelerating regulatory writing with AI. So the user logs in to the application and um, chooses a domain of interest. As you can imagine, a clinical study um, consists of many different uh, so-called domains. So we have certain buckets or certain topics uh, that either describes demographics or the patient history or the safety or efficacy, et cetera, et cetera. And Within all those um, domains, there are the tables. So we can then load the tables using the metadata I described before by providing the title of the, of the tables and can uh, navigate through, again, one hundreds, uh, tens or hundreds of tables depending on the size of the study and the domain. So after um, a table is chosen, um, we can configure the table display. So first of all, um, the medical writer can uh, choose the, the arms or the columns of the table that are displayed. Um, we can then um, filter, group, sort, and much more. Once uh, the apply button is clicked, the table is displayed. And Depending on the domain, I told you, we can have very lengthy tables that are almost uh, too big to be shipped to a uh, large language model. Um, so it doesn't make any sense if we ask the large language model to write nar narratives for 500 uh, lines of a table. So here you see um, a uh, treatment emergent adverse events table that consists of a higher grouping term that is the system organ class and a lower term that is the preferred term according to some uh, medical on, um, vocabularies, in that case, MEDRA. Uh, we can then allow the medical writer to filter out term, terms to say, display only the highest level term. So I want only to describe the system organ class, um, as you can see here, or I can filter the table by certain uh, thresholds that are um, in the, um, in the numeric um, columns. So for example, if you want to describe only adverse events that uh, are above a certain threshold, you can filter this table. So now it becomes interesting once you have configured your table and you have displayed it as you want, um, you want to generate the text. 
So we can um, choose from different large language models. You see here currently we, we support LAMA models and GPT models. Uh, we started with 3.5, we still offer it here. Um, now we have also newer models like GPT 4.0 and GPT 4 Turbo. Um, and um, after the model is chosen, you select a prompt out of a prompt library. So we provide the user already a predefined a prompting library that we engineered and we found useful for generating text for a specific summary table. Um, in case we have text heavy medical writers that want to edit the prompt, we have here a switch button that allows you to edit the prompt. Usually this field isn't displayed, but in case you want to edit the prompt, we just um, display it and it's an editable uh, field. So you can adjust the prompt uh, to your needs or you can create a complete own prompt. And we also um, provided uh, the possibility to submit um, this prompt to the programming team um, that then can decide whether or not this prompt is worthwhile taking into the prompt library because it might enhance um, um, the data generation. Okay. So once um, the generate button is clicked, um, we populate an, an output text editor with generated text. And um, we, we stream that data into the R editor here. And I emphasize that because it was not easy to teach R to do that because usually R and Shiny isn't able to handle streaming data. So, um, the, the challenge is usually um, only the full response can be processed. So we send an API call and usually you get the full generated text block back into R. So there are no good um, possibilities to stream the text and see the text being generated. And that is sometimes a burden because um, as you might know, um, the LLM APIs sometimes have quite heavy load. Therefore, the answer might take a while. And we don't want the user uh, to be unaware whether or not the API will respond sooner or later. So sometimes it takes 10 seconds, 15 seconds, or even longer. And without any feedback, you don't know what's happening. And to avoid users to click the reload button too early, um, we wanted to have this uh, usual behavior that um, the text is generated step by step and you see it being created. So, and therefore, we are using this um, this JavaScript editor, which also gives some nice um, text formatting capabilities, um, but we extended uh, Shiny with some um, custom JavaScript and um, uh, using the Shiny session features like set input value and send custom me message to enhance it by the streaming capability and the user now sees the text being generated. Step by step, and a funny anecdote. Um, this was created by by Matt, um, and I think Joey came up with a similar solution in some Stack Overflow chat or something like this, and uh, that made us believe that we found a, a good solution here. Um, as I said, the editor can be used for formatting text also, so that the generated text can then be. Um, Formatted um, can be there can be bold sections there can be a certain formatting and I just uh, made this text here appear in red color. Um, you then have the opportunity to export uh, the generated text together with the asset in that case a table that was used to to do the API call and output a markdown export. So that is helpful because then medical writers can generate text output and um, share that among each other to um, to assess whether or not um, the, the output is useful. So you see here the mark markdown output. So we have um, the table that was used. Um, we have the formatted text. And we also provide all the user options that we use to see uh, to make it repl replicatable or as replicatable as possible if you talk about LLM. So we see here how where the table setting, how was the sorting, how was the filtering, etc., and what user prompt was used to call the API. So after the text 
is generated, um, we additionally have now two options. We can either uh, save the whole session. So I, I showed you that um, a clinical study consists of many different domains. So probably you have to, um, you, you don't do everything in one uh, session and you want to save what you have done so far. So for example, you worked on a, the demographics domain and you want to save the current state. You can then create a save file um, that you can reload again to restore your session, but you can also share that among the medical writers working on the same study. Um, but you can also um, click this create first draft button here. It downloads then a, a Word document uh, to, your, to your browser. And this Word document uh, consists of the Transcelerate template that is quite a standard template for uh, CSR sections in, in our industry and uh, the generated text together with the table, a fully editable table is put into the Word document. Um, so now what would be the next level? So we don't, we didn't stop at um, the text generation piece, but we also thought about um, the description of figures. So we use here large language models with visual capabilities. So for example, GPT-4 Vision Preview, that is, I would say the legacy model. Uh, the more recent one is GPT-4 Turbo with Vision. I think GPT-4.0 has also vision capabilities and probably the most recent ones um, have it also. And with that, we can just send an image to the API. Those images are also part of this tables listings figures um, concept I explained to you. And you can use um, um, the large language model now to describe scientific images quite well. And uh, that works surprisingly good. And I just showed you, show you here three different examples. We have here a forest plot uh, that is very well interpreted here in that case. Uh, we have waterfall plots um, and we have so-called spider plots that are usual plots uh, in the oncology clinical space. And all of them are interpreted very well and the generated text is, is really useful as a first draft uh, description. So um, to summarize a bit, so we have, um, we see a lot of potential for large language models in the medical writing process and beyond. Um, if you think about um, clinical trials and new trial designs uh, coming up, um, for example, adaptive designs, we have uh, changing content. So the, the TLF displays and the TLF catalogs constantly change. And there are also much more abstract concepts like S demands in the clinical space. It's very hard to keep track if we think about automation in a, in a classical way. So we started thinking about automating the medical writing process by um, applying rule-based approaches. So, and as you can imagine, evolving all the, this evolving um, domain makes it necessary to adjust rules again and again. So the use of AI and specifically uh, large language models have quite a much a potential to match this pace and, and shift the focus from this rigid automation paradigm to a dynamic generation uh, paradigm that is able to adjust uh, to changes in the underlying data uh, much more flexibly. So, um, and the great, uh, so the easy access of these technologies have really empowered us to leverage this and uh, uh, just do more while reducing time and effort uh, spent on shared deliverables. Um, also, one takeaway is R, Shiny, and Gen AI really plays well along. So it's um, really easy to make this work. Uh, there are many convenience functions available for, for data with respect to filtering, displaying, the prompt handling, and so on. Um, Gen AI really has the potential to be a game changer when it comes to medical writing and helping medical writers to get their, the draft fast. Um, the learnings are universally applicable and it's very easy to plug and play models. So as you saw, we have Llama now and GPT and um, there is uh, probably, um, so we are prepared for the future evolutions of LLMs. Um, some acknowledgements for people who were involved in this project. Um, 
due to the lack of time, I won't read them out, but all of them contributed significantly to, to the project. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. Awesome work. Thank you, Robert, so much. I do want to see if we have a chance to do a quick uh, question here. Can you see the chat box, Robert? Maybe uh, pick yes, one or two. Yes. I can see the chat box and I already uh, had an eye on it. So um, okay. I would like to probably take the first question. How do you ensure that your data stays private given that you are passing it out to open API via API? That was asked by Ak Akbar, Akbari or Akbar. Um, so we have an internal um, deployment of those models that is um, that is um, classified for us to to be used with um, yeah with classified data. We have different um, data classifications internally, probably as all of our companies have, and uh, we are allowed to use it with a data classification under which our clinical trial outputs fall at this point in time when medical writing is using it. So that, of course, we discussed very lengthy and um, uh, yeah, we are allowed to use that. So it's not using the um, the public open API endpoints, but a, um, yeah, a, like internal deployment of it. All right, so we're at everybody.